Good afternoon. Good afternoon and warm welcome to one of the most attractive lesion subsets in interventional cardiology. Left main and complex bifurcation PCI is still the most challenging and also prognostically significant indication. And I'm sure that together we will discuss today educational case transmission from Massif France. If I can have my slides, please. These are my conflicts of interest. And this is the theme for today. I have pleasure to co-moderate this session with my colleague Tom Johnson. And then we will have in Massif operators Akim Benamer and Tom Awaz, our procedural analyst who will help us and guide us through the procedure is Francesco Burzotta. And then we have as a discussants Yoshiki Noshita, Piotr Kala, Mubarak Aldosari, and Philip Garo. Inside the CAT lab, we will have Yoshio Numa as a discussant and specialist for imaging. And our coordinator is Marco Lombardi. I would like to invite you all to contribute and help us and guide us. Share your experience. Please use mobile application to pose your questions, but please feel free and take those microphones inside the room. So I would like to invite now Tom to present the case. Tom. Thanks, Goran, and, and welcome. It, it's great to see a, a packed audience um, for what will be a, a really interesting case, I hope. So hopefully my slides can come up. This is a, a patient with distal left main stem stenosis being treated in Massey, Paris. So Mr. AP is a 62-year-old gentleman and actually presented to their practice with a two-month history of recent onset exercise angina, class CCS3. That's actually, interestingly, on a background of severe aortic regurgitation relating to a bicuspid aortic valve for which he underwent cardiovascular surgery. He went, had a Magna Ease 27 implanted in 2015 and at that time underwent angiography, which was reportedly normal. So uh, the suggestion of significant progression of disease over an eight, nine year period. Otherwise, uh, high blood pressure, former smoker as cardiovascular risk factors. He's a reasonable height and weight with a body mass index of 27, and he's active with now this very significant burden of angina. The only medication preceding this intervention is Ramipril 10 milligrams. Importantly, hemoglobin is within the normal range. The troponin is negative. This is a stable presentation, and renal function is okay, an EGFR of 71. The ECG shows incomplete left bundle branch block, and importantly, the echo in the context of the aortic valve prosthesis, there is normally functioning valve with normal ventricular function. And these are the angiographic images that were required prior to today's procedure, showing in place, the surgical aortic valve, obviously stenotomy-wise, and a very severe distal left main stem lesion. We see here in um, a cranial projection, again, um, this significant uh, disease distal with an interesting bifurcation, possible trifurcation anatomy. It looks like a high diagonal branch. And again, here we see another cranial projection. And here's the right coronary, which has some moderate non-obstructive proximal disease. And then interestingly, the guys in Massey have undertaken a CT considering the intervention with a, with a view to then uh, understanding the impact that either repeated surgery or intervention might play. And so here we see evidence of the aortic valve implant in relation to the aortic root and then delineated on the two-dimensional planar imaging the, the disease in the distal left main stem for us to discuss in a moment. The risk score, syntax of 16, equipoise on syntax 2 between surgery and PCI, and the surgical risk has an overall operative mortality of 0.5%. It has been discussed at their local MDT with a plan to PCI. So, in, in summary, we have a 62-year-old gentleman, surgical valve, exercise angina, distal left main. We'll let that run. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. 
So brief summary, if we can have the last slide playing while we discuss. Uh, thank you very much. So the one that, uh, that, can we have the slide back? Yeah, thank you very much. So 62 year old gentleman, young, prior surgery, severe exercise angina, distal left main, let's say trifurcation stenosis. Uh, Peter, let me start with you. Should we consider another surgery at all or not? I think that uh, we, uh, we are dealing with a patient with low risk for PCI and low risk for bypass surgery. But having uh, in uh, consideration that uh, the patient is after a surgical aortic valve replacement, of course, uh, we are talking about the lifelong uh, therapy and lifelong uh, management. So we have to suppose that um, in the future he will need some uh, TAVI uh, procedure. So for me, it's not a candidate uh, for uh, bypass surgery, for re-surgery, so, but it's a very good candidate for, uh, for PCI. And what should be mentioned also that uh, the patient has uh, relatively low risk for bleeding. So it's also good for uh, long-term dual antiplatelet therapy. Okay. Uh, Yoshi, Dr. Mubarak, yeah. would you consider surgery or you agree that PCI is the uh, best option yeah. at the moment? I think uh, both option uh, is feasible. Um, I will go with the, with the BCI, as I mentioned with Thomas. Is a, he has a, a valve which, uh, which might need uh, and by uh, valvular uh, intervention later on. So uh, I think he can go for, uh, for BCI uh, in this moment. Japan. They are on, you can see. Yes, uh, in this case, a uh, patient have already uh, had a big surgery for the replacement uh, 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 of the outer valve, arctic valve. So the, in this case, the, hmm, so uh, patient uh, age is 62 years old, not so old. Uh, so uh, once it's I... It's actually young. Yeah, young in Japan. In Japan, <laughs> yeah. very young. Yes, so the, in this case, uh, the, I once tried to the, uh, fix this region with the PCI. Mm, because the, this patient has uh, some, um, uh, so some possibility to have a big surgery after that from now. Mm. Yeah, thank you. So. Our heart team here in the room confirmed the decision of the heart team in Massy, and we elected for PCI. Uh, while we are preparing the images to better understand plug distribution, composition, and strategy, I'll ask my colleague and friend, Philippe Caro, from whom I learned a lot how to do provisional, to help us trifurcation versus bifurcation and how that impacts on the strategy. Yes, uh, thank you, Goran. Uh, I think if you look carefully at the bifurcation lesion, you can see that this is a left main one, zero, zero, and maybe zero uh, lesion, uh, meaning that the, the, the plaque is really located at the distal part of the left main, not involving the branches distally. But if you look, um, you have an LAD, a circumflex, and you have something that may be a ramus or maybe a first diagonal, very proximal, uh, which makes sense uh, for the plan of the procedure. Um, I think I don't want to uh, uh, explain the strategy that who you will do, but I think we have to wire all branches and think about all these three branches that are very relevant, very important, and that, of course, we want to preserve yeah. and we want to keep with the best result possible. Yeah, thanks. I completely agree with you. When you see such tight distal left main and three big branches, I think you put three wires, you protect these three branches, and then probably use imaging to understand better the anatomy. But maybe Francesco can help us how to interpret what we just saw on the angio. So basically, I think that you started reviewing all the aspects that are important. When we plan our procedures, what is very important is to review carefully all the images we have been collected. In this particular case, coronary angiography has been done, but also CT scan has been done. So it makes sense to try to integrate all the images we have been collected in, in the benefit of a more predictable procedure plan. So for example, in this caudal view, you see that there is no 
for sure it is clear that we have here a tight disease into the distal left main, but what is unclear is how these big branches are involved or not. And this is particularly problem, important. So one image is not enough, and we have to, to review other images eventually, and we start here to, for example, integrate the images that are coming from the CT scan. Here you see one important point, that is the fact that the plaque is really very well characterized. You see that the osteum is free of disease. You may understand which is the relationship with the, the, bio, the, the prosthesis, so the guiding catheter can be selected according to this. We know that there will be no problem in engaging, and here we definitely see that there is this amount of plaque that is very close to the bifurcation, but without measure involvement of the two branches. So to me, this shows a condition where we have a in le main left main involvement, but without a very high risk of compromise of the side branch. On the other side, we may also start to stratify the risk because we see that there is one branch, eventually the LAD, that is on the same side of the plaque. So we expect with the wire to have a little bit more problem in engaging the LAD, but with the stent implanted across, we will have the possibility to scaffold the plaque away from the bifurcation. So, and this is very good uh, demonstration about the integration of the two aspects. Again, if we come back to the uh, angiographic images, sorry, you see that definitely that uh, in this particular view, it is almost impossible to really understand, appreciate all these aspects. Last remark to me, um, Goran mentioned the three wires. Here we have a trifurcation where we understand in this particular view the fact that we have basically a bifurcation with a very, very proximal first diagonal. This configures still the feature of a trifurcation, since tri trifurcation is defined when we have a branch that is directly stemming from the left main or coming from one of the two branch, LED or circumflex, very close millimeters to the left main. This means that there can be arguments to protect, although it seems that there is not a lot of plaque here. So we have now, I think, the plan, very good procedure for provisional, in my mind. Should we stop with stand before trifurcation or we go crossover? I, I think that the, the integration of these images tells you that there is no enough space to land with your stand without compromising the bifurcation. So definitely we need to select a branch that according to both angiography and CT scan makes sense to be the LAD to me. Thank you. Francesco, if I understand correctly, CT scan integration, there is a funnel shape, very large, proximal part of the left main, and then we go towards the LED. What kind of stand do we need to adapt to this kind of mismatch? So again, let's, uh, let's come back to, to these images that are probably the one that we are more confident with in our, uh, during our practice. If we analyze carefully, we see that we have here a reference segment and then a landing zone in this area that is healthy. It looks healthy and we know now since the CT scan has been done that there is no measured plaque here. So we may estimate that there is a big drop in terms of size. And uh, this is also anticipated by the fact that we have uh, two other main branches. So this, uh, the flow here should accommodate the flow to three big branches. So this translates in a measured mismatch. 
which kind of stent we need? We need a stent that is able to adapt these different sizes. This means that we select a stent that is able to land here, but it is possible to expand here the stent in this segment in order to appropriately scaffold the plaque and oppose to the proximal part of the left main. So well, this is a challenging condition for our stand platform and the selection of the stand platform should be for sure really, really, really investigated on advance. New generation of stand like Nagomi may have the potential to be used for this indication. Would you like to discuss uh, design characteristics from there or you come here and uh, use the slides? So Let's go to the slides. Because Please, I, I already no opened your presentation. So, compared to Tansei, share with us what's <laughs> new that Nagomi is bringing. So, basically, it is very important to understand uh, the, the fact that the last generation uh, platforms have been improved in order to adapt to these uh, challenging anatomies. The uh, Altimaster Tansei basically incorporated all the Ruragliutin technology coming from Altimaster family and uh, uh, with a lot of trials on, but was improved in technical uh, features in both the, the balloon and the, slast and the stent in order to accommodate the increase in deliverability, easiness, and also the possibility to accommodate to challenging anatomy. I will not review, I mean, all these aspects. I think that at the room of boot, you will have all the information about the fact that this is an, a bioresorbable drug coating, uh, drug luty stent. But what I want to review with you in terms of the procedure we are doing is the fact that for this stent, new stent platform, we have three different kind of stents that are mounted on different balloons. So we should, uh, look at, like for T-shirt, to small vessel design, medium vessel design, and large vessel design. And this changes the possibility to expand safely the stand. In terms of safety, I, I can tell you it, it means the fact that we can on-label use the, the stand. These are not the maximum expandable uh, sizes, but this is the one for which Terumo ensures you that it is possible to do. And there is a significant difference, for sure, because with the 275 millimeter stent, you may go to 4.5 millimeters safely. With the 3.5, you may go up to 625 millimeter stent. So let's imagine that the patient has a measured 3.4 millimeter. In this condition, I think with a large left main to be covered like that, it really makes sense to try to do our best in order to deliver the 3.5 platform so that we will have a good scaffolding here. Other thing, in this condition we have a short disease to be treated, but with this new platform we have the possibility to cover with a single stent up to 50 millimeters. In the case you have to cover lung disease in the LED and a similar mismatch in size, it makes sense using it. And final remark, we have big branches here to deal with. There is importance in terms of design response to kissing balloon inflation and side branch ballooning, and this is a very suitable platform to me. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Francesco. Masi team is ready. I think that we have the strategy, and I'll try to uh, briefly summarize the discussion. So, 62-year-old gentleman, prior server, exercise angina, distal left main trifurcation. The key objectives for today are to understand the best treatment options for our patients presenting with distal left main trifurcation. We will discuss together and try to learn how to optimize both the strategy and the technique using OFDI imaging, and we try to understand mechanical properties of Ultimaster Nagomi Sirolimus Salutin Coronary Stand System. This is the strategy decided by the team in Massy, one of the best centers in the world. Seven French radial, three wires, left main LED stenting after intracoronary imaging, 
potent kissing guided by intracoronary imaging, T or TAP if needed, and final result assessed by OFDI. Seven French glide sheet slender and run through wires. Ultimaster Nagomi, as Francesco said, Acuforce, NC Balloon, and OFDI intravascular imaging. The operators are Toma and Akim, and I welcome them in Theater Blue. Thank you very much, Goran. Thank you all. We are very happy and proud to be a part of uh, PC Euro PCR. Let me. Uh, yeah, we can clearly hear you and see the team in Massey. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. So uh, let me introduce the, the team. Thomas will do the, the case and we have uh, Maud as a nurse and uh, Sophie. And the anesthesiologist is Mehdi Ben Ahmed. And we have the uh, uh, medical uh, or organizer, which is Thierry Unterze. So uh, what we have done just before the coming life, uh, uh, Thomas? So hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you in, uh, in Massy in the Cat Lab. So as uh, you saw on the strategy, we are in a, a radial uh, approach uh, with uh, seven uh, uh, French uh, Glide cheese uh, slender. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, we took uh, an extra backup uh, 3.5 according to the size of the patient, which uh, will provide uh, good support. Um, we already put uh, the three wire. As you said, the three branches are very big, so you don't, you, we don't want to lose any one of them. And we uh, use uh, the wires after to try to find some good projection. As you can see here, this one is, is quite nice uh, on the proximal LED. And uh, uh, you can see that we advance the extra backup uh, uh, with a long multipurpose, which is very nice because it avoids some fraction. You can see here the, the um, run through going through the cirque. Uh, with a, a good shape, but it was not uh, very difficult. And uh, now we are ready for uh, intracoronary imaging, which was our strategy to guide uh, the rest of the procedure. So we will build all the, the strategy with the uh, information given by the OFDI. So Thomas is going to perform this uh, OFDI. Uh, would you consider, Thomas, so to predilate left main or you will yeah. go? So we plan to realize first the OFDI okay. and then perform a predilatation before stenting, of course. So baseline imaging. But right now we, we don't plan to do, to do baseline imaging. Okay, so as you, as, you, as you see, the, the OFDI went quite easily in the lesion. Yeah, it's uh, ready. Lovely. And now we are performing the OFDI. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a few seconds to acquire the image. Uh, Tom, do we have any comments? There have been a couple of comments. One pertinent to the fact we're now looking at the morphology is about yes. whether CT is being used in mo in many people's practice. I, I've tried to be responding. Um, so yeah, certainly in the you. UK, we are using it a lot in stable situation. I don't know about others. Um, another was based upon the planning of deploying, as Francesco said, a stent that has to overexpand into the left main. Um, have we got balloons that can go up to 6 or 6.25 millimetres was another procedural question. But please do continue to interact on the app and I'll do my best to respond by keyboard. Yeah, you see the quality of the images is really superb and we see both branches. Uh So, Dr. Onuma will give us uh, information regarding the. Yeah, we give him some time to acquire regarding this left, distal left mid lesion. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we can discuss also uh, without the imaging, um, we can consider this left main, which is quite a flare at the ostium. So, may, maybe we will not treat it 
yeah. until the ostium, but w imaging will tell us. And the second thing is maybe we have a landing zone between the left main and the diagonal, but it seems very, very short. short. So it's maybe hazardous to try to put a stent from left main to proximal LED without involving the diagonal. So that's our thought before the imaging. Um, it's a very, very important point that we avoid to stand, if it's possible, the ostium of the left main because uh, there's a, a, a problem of compression sometimes, especially uh, with a, a seven French guiding catheter which is a, a, a big size with a, a, a huge uh, passive support. So we will avoid this uh, ostium, uh, but can we I, will can see I that ask? with the uh, results of the OFDI. Yeah, can I ask yes, Yoshi course. maybe, uh, Yoshi, IVUS versus OCT for the left main, this is distal left main, what would Test. be your advice? Dr. Mm. Kinoshita, okay. IVUS or OCT yes. for evaluation of distal left yes. main? What are the limitations of OCT or FDI? Yes, uh, it's uh, actually that now. So in OCT, you know that we, we need the flushing. There. So the, if there are left main is very, very short, uh, we cannot, uh, sometimes in many cases, we cannot uh, uh, get the enough flushing. So the image quality is very, become a poor. But instead of that, I was always okay. we can on see a clear read, uh, even in the uh, uh, even in the left uh, domain uh, is very short. So the, usually, uh, so the I uh, in our daily practice uh, in the left domain region, I usually use uh, uh, I was fast choice, but okay, but after the. the uh, after the putting the stent, and uh, when I choose that the uh, best crossing, point, crossing point, at yes. that time OCT or OFD is the best. Yeah. Mm. yeah, because we can make a 3D, um, uh, 3D, uh, uh, 3D imaging. Mm. Yeah, Tom, should we apply the protocol of the October regarding the imaging in this case? Well. Uh, Mm -hmm. I may be the wrong person to ask because I th do use the October protocol, but I don't think it is real world necessarily. I mean, clearly we're seeing here the importance of the pre-intervention imaging to understand morphology, to have an assessment particularly pertinent to the bifurcation in terms of vessel sizing, expecting this disparity in distal to proximal sizing. And then as Yoshi says, I, I think the resolution of OCT, OFDI allows you then to make assessments, which okay. hopefully we can showcase here in terms of recross and optimization of the side branch, which, which you can only do through multiple runs. But we have to be practical oh. and pragmatic and five or six yeah. runs yes. for every case is probably not the reality. Yeah. Let's see what uh, uh, Yoshi can share with us uh, if uh, Yoshi is ready. Can't hear you, Yoshi. Yes, he's ready yeah. now. Yes, yeah. Oh, Maybe perfect. I can. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Um, Great. Yes. Yeah. So this is a pullback from the proximal LED. You can see that it's a diffusory disease. Most of the plaque are very uh, fibrous. There is a, a diagonal coming in. So this is the wire from the diagonal, and between the diagonal and left main, there is some small amount of the uh, relatively large vessel. And then here it is a MSA if it is very low, and uh, in the proximal part of the uh, left main, it's going to be the very large. I think some of the uh, vessel wall is not really captured with the OFTI, also based on the uh, kind of the biased position of the catheter as well. But uh, I will show the some measures. So this study from the uh, um, uh, proximal LED, the diameter is uh, uh, in between 2.8 to 3.0 millimeter. And then uh, after the diagonal, this is a diagonal, and then here the measurement was made, so the uh, diameter is 3.8. And then after that, there was uh, MSA, which is the uh, 1.4 uh, 
uh, very very uh, um, uh, severely diseased, uh, stenosed uh, left main, distal left main, and then coming back to this uh, uh, left main uh, in the mid part uh, shaft, the uh, diameter is the uh, 4.3 millimeter or even a little bit larger because I think the some part of the vessel is uh, out of the uh, scan diameter of the OFDI. Uh, so I think probably proximally it's uh, 4.5, uh, mid part is uh, all, uh, is, uh, also 3.8 and this study it's uh, 3.0. So it's a huge disparity of the diameter, this study it's uh, two, okay. 3 millimeter. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we have the distal part of the lesion which is 3.0. We have the, the, the left main, which has the, the diameter of the left main is 4.5. Yes. So, and the length of the lesion, the overall uh, uh, lesion is? Yeah, so if you try to cover the mid part of the uh, left main, it's going to be the 28 to uh, yeah, 30 millimeter, I think, yeah. Okay, so I think, Akima, if you agree, Yoshi, if you agree, uh, as we want to expand the stand correctly in the left man, we have to take uh, maybe a 3.5 uh, three five. with not too much pressure yeah. uh, and then do a first spot on the proximal LED at 4.0 and a second spot on the left main at 4.5. Absolutely. So let's take a, a stand 3.5. Uh, 328. 3.5, uh, 28 uh, uh, millimeter length. And so, uh, we saw that uh, with the Nagomi stent, we are able to go up to 6.25, but it will not be necessary. We will go to uh, 4.5. So you can see uh, that uh, during the uh, analysis of the FDI, I've, I've performed a predilatation of the left main with the 3 O AccuForce uh, uh, 15 ba balloon. And so, now the left man is a little bit Thomas, better. Thomas, this is a beautiful, a beautiful the demonstration. The balloon was well open uh, with the three point. Hakim and Thomas, I just wonder, so Yoshi's made the measurements which has helped tremendously. I, I wonder if we just have the OFDI up as well again, just to understand the proximal optimization distance, Yoshi. We've had a very good question here about over-expansion of device, and we've highlighted the Nagomi having this capacity to get up to 6.25. But what length do we have from the yeah. carina of the circumflex back in terms of ensuring we don't land into that very large funnel where the stent will be malopposed? So this is the benefit of using the imaging up front to really understand the, the lengths and the distances that we're going to be negotiating. Can you show us just very briefly while we're placing the stent? Okay. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is a very good question. So uh, you can see that uh, the this, yeah, you, you measure the carina of uh, a diagonal and LED to the uh, uh, beginning of the circumflex, it's uh, seven millimeter. And then if you measure the uh, from the ostium of the carina uh, of uh, left main to the proximal part, it's a uh, nine millimeter. So right. I think there is uh, probably the space to do the kissing, uh, the pot for, for the diagonal and also for the uh, uh, left main. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thomas, so you, you can see now the stent is in place. What, uh, OK. Yeah. So what do you think of the position? We are a, a in a cranial view, as you can see. I think we avoid the flare part of the, of the left main. I think we have enough place in the uh, mid LED or proximal LED to perform a kissing if you want to with a diagonal. So for me, the position of the stent is quite good now, but I, we, I would love to have the, the, the opinion of the, of the panel. Of the panel. Yeah. Philip. Is this according to standards? Yes, uh, I think definitely we, we, it's a very nice case again. We, we can see with imaging confirming the fractal anatomy that we have different diameters uh, along the, this lesion uh, from the, the LAD, proximal LAD or middle LAD, I should say, and then proximal and then left main. So the beauty of the stand there is to expand at three different diameters, which is possible with the pot technique. And uh, the stent definitely is really well placed, and we have enough place distally with us 
I would say, quite free area, and proximally we have place to do the pot in the left main. Yeah, uh, Akim, what is the pressure uh, you deploy okay, so stent? What is the pressure to... and for how long yeah, you yeah. keep balloon yeah. inflated? Absolutely. So the pressure is eight because the, the platform is 3.5 and we have s seen before that the, the diameter of the LAD at this part was uh, 3.0. So uh, with the low pressure to be sure that we will not have any dissection on the LAD and uh, uh, the duration of the, of the inflation is uh, 30 seconds. For the left man, you you do what you can do for the uh, length inflation. So but we we saw that the pressure yeah, was well going anyway. down, but we tr we almost done 30 seconds, maybe between yeah. something between 20 and 30. Yeah, it's important that you can repeat. So you can see at the. Uh, yeah, it is important that you can repeat sorry. inflation. Ahead, of course, on. if you have hemodynamic compromise. But uh, uh, the pressure of eight, yeah. I think, is very good choice because distal cross-sectional area inside the stand will adapt to vessel diameter. Absolutely. So we're going to do now the proximal part on the proximal part of the LED. So I retrieve the stand balloon. Uh, with uh, carefully uh, maintaining the guiding out of the left main to avoid longitudinal compression, even if now we are not at the ostium, so the risk is lower, but yeah. still you don't want the a deep intubation with, uh, with uh, a guiding, especially when the pot yeah. is not yet performed. Yeah, so we have exactly that test, question please. and Tom uh, what yeah, is so the question? We have a number of interesting questions um, rel relevant to the discussion now. Okay, is there a difference between pot side? Okay, uh, would you be pot side pot or pot kiss pot or just pot? Okay. Um, what, what's your preference in this setting? We've just been asked. Yeah. Uh, if I can share my practice, I believe for large side branches, especially for the left main, the benefit of pot kiss pot compared to pot side okay. pot is that simultaneous balloon inflation also positions okay. carina in the center and maintains the normal physiological pattern of flow. And uh, okay. I prefer to avoid the problem of positioning of the second pot balloon, which if you go too distally, will shift metal actually and compromise uh, the, the side branch. So for the left main and for big bifurcations, my personal strategy is pot key spot if we decide to do it. Yeah, but actually, actually, this is uh, like a, uh, this case, a uh, trifurcation. In the trifurcation case, port position is a very, very important yeah, because yeah. the uh, so original uh, level to port position. Sometimes they modify the uh, modify the position of the uh, ring or strut, and uh, it's uh, sometimes cause of the a little bit disturb to decrease the wire to the uh, rim branch or a circumflex branch. So uh, in daily practice, in this case. I just uh, uh, perform the pot only approximate part, not bifurcation core. So just uh, to uh, avoid the, um, uh, the uh, migration of wire to the under, uh, uh, out of the uh, stent. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and then uh, once we check the OFDI to, uh, to uh, recognize the, uh, the uh, relationship between the side branch ostium and the stent strut. So you, you suggest to perform imaging now after yes, yes, pot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We are just finalizing the pot throughout the proximal stented segment inside the left main. Anti tests. So right now we are. Uh, Thomas did the pot on the proximal part of the LED okay. with a 4-0 balloon, <laughs> and we are completing this uh, point pot with a. 4.5 on the left main. I says, yeah, and I we, can. Tu fais un puff? Yeah, bon, maybe I faire, can and, help. And we uh, will do a puff. Okay. Hot puff. Off. Et est-ce qu'on peut se mettre en stand boost live? We did a pot puff to be sure that uh, uh, the the balloon was uh, 
was completely at the at the wall of the of the left main. So I love to 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 do some stent enhancement in those cases to to be sure that uh, but it, for this patient with it is difficult because we have a lot of metal yeah yeah with but the so wire we right? try to do one but usually we we do a lot of uh, yes enhancement I'm not sure that oh, ah no. we can see the clearly the stent okay mod basila so Hakim and Tom are relevant to this we've just been asked part about of the stent. Kissing two or th with two or three balloons. So are you going to rewire both of these okay. bifurcations and then OFDI before considering the kiss? Tris? Yeah. Or nothing? Yes. We, yes. We will, we, will do, we will do the re rewiring first and uh, uh, check uh, if the wires oh. are at, at the good strut. To be sure that uh, uh, we will okay. optimize yes, the shoulder on the on the branch with the stent. So the yes, the yes, optimization yes. Uh, and enhancement of, of the stent is a very good tool uh, for this kind of uh, procedure, yes, especially uh, when you perform an angioplasty of the left main and Et to uh, uh, avoid uh, geographical miss and to be sure that on all the area the of the stent is well deployed by the pot. So the quality of the pot is uh, uh, one of the main steps of the angioplasty of the left main or the bifurcation <coughs> in general. Yeah, thank you, Akim. So I would agree, like to ask now Francesco. Now with I would like to ask Francesco now to help us as procedural analyst. We have two bifurcations. It's LAD diagonal with one step down, and then we have left main LAD with another step down. So that's probably the okay. reason why they perform twice pot with two different balloons. Yes, for sure. I mean, in this case, uh, we know that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, okay. it on was on also on confirmed on by the OCT, but we knew on advance the fact that it is not a, a entirely true trifurcation. We have basically two bifurcations very clo close one to each other. So it is typical situation where POT can be repeated using appropriately sized balloons. And I think that the OCT imaging analysis helped in this because they selected the balloons one to one according to this. Evaluation. Pot side pot or pot kiss pot? Regarding pot key spot, honestly, uh, and pot side pot, the, what we know is the fact that uh, the benefit of pot side pot is uh, to let uh, the stent be not oval shaped after kissing. This is the only benefit we have. But uh, the side effect is the fact that uh, with the position of uh, the RPOT balloon, we have to be so precise to correct the deformation induced by isolated side branch inflation that helped, that prompted the invention of kissing balloon inflation. Mm -hmm. This is my main concern. So if we select the pot kiss pot, the pot side pot, we will induce a predictable deformation inside the distal main vessel that should be corrected at the end. So for these uh, purposes, in measured by, by bifurcations, most of the time I use kissing like you. Thank you. Uh, Toma, you are wiring uh, now diagonal. That's a very good point. Yeah. Trying to pull back so, wires. Yes, he, he, he tried the first one and, uh, yeah. And uh, the, the first uh, attempt was not the, the, the distal strut. So Thomas uh, did a, a second time. And you can see on the, on the, on the, ima in the image that the wire, the position of the, uh, the jail wire was not the same as the, uh, the second wire. You can see a gap between both wires. So it is a very good uh, indicator of uh, uh, the distal uh, strut crossing. Yeah, when you have the floppy in, in, in crossing the, the stent, you can make a, a, a small test and it, it will show you uh, 
if you are very proximal or distal. Yeah. Some tips and tricks for uh, this uh, rewiring in, in the left main or bifurcation. We use uh, uh, new wires. We don't use, we don't exchange wires. We prefer uh, using a, a, a new wires to, to be sure that uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, in, in pass uh, uh, behind the uh, uh, behind the, the, the stand strut, that's a, a very important point. And uh, we have to go uh, distal to the bifurcation with the wire and then fall in the ostium of the side branch as, as did the, uh, just before uh, uh, Thomas. And yeah, I think it's a, a very all wires are run through. You have, to keep, you have to keep the main branch. Yes, yes. Well, everything with the run through. So this is, uh, you see, I'm in the crossing the stand. I will do a small test now. Test. You see, there's a, a small gap between both wires, which is a very, very good yeah. uh, uh, indicator of the uh, distal crossing. Uh, yeah, but I believe that uh, OFDI run so will definitely tell us better what is the recrossing yeah. point. <laughs> we'll and, confirm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's nice to have it's nice to have Yoshi Onuma as the PI of the optimum trial, who really confirmed the benefit regarding stent mala position in the bifurcation area with image guidance compared to angiography guidance. On va reprendre l'OFDI. Absolutely, Goran. That's why we are uh, okay to do now the OFDI to be sure that the, the stent is well opposed on the left main with no uh, mala position and uh, uh, that uh, the wires recross the distal strut of each bi bifurcation. Yeah, so we've just been asked the circ and the, the um, diagonal ostium both look perfect. Why bother rewiring? Why bother kissing? So I've, I've just responded to say that the rewiring is an, in anticipation of this OFDI run, because if we need to optimize, then we have all the information available with that single OFDI run. The only other thing, Goran, you asked about October. We've just published some really provocative data related to unintended stent deformation which highlights in the setting of left main particularly, we have ah. in 20% of cases some form of stent deformation or abluminal wiring. So actually it's gonna be really important with this OFDI run to see the relationship of those wires okay. and also understand the relationship of the guide catheter with that proximal segment of stent, I think. Yeah, I, I had pleasure to write the editorial to that one. <laughs> so I know the data. Uh, <coughs> No, OCT Core Lab from the October evaluated the data and identified 9.3% of cases with unintended stand deformation. And this was especially risky in the left main. The rate in the left main mm. was double, 18.5%. And 50% of those were not corrected periprocedural. And it's those nice. were actually the patients with events that mm. follow up. So we now understand the importance of image guidance in order to improve procedural result. Because okay. if stand deformation was periprocedurally corrected, those patients did not have the event. We wait for Yoshi to finish uh, the analysis and... Uh, so we have a very interesting Im images. On va prendre... Uh, we, we will need to give more uh, details about, of the left about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, 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 you can clearly see a mala position on the, on the uh, proximal part of the uh, left main. Yes. Is it uh, uh, that result, uh, yes, Dr. Yeah. Numa? Yes, I think uh, uh, proximal left main looks like... Uh, um, Stent is more opposed. Um, I think I will just measure the uh, largeness of uh, 
left main again. I think it's something of 4.5, but I think strut is here, yeah, so uh, maybe uh, uh, cut, there is uh, some uh, 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 left main uh, mara position to be corrected. Here it's not really fully expanded, so I think the proximal edge need uh, another pot or the, another post rotation. I will just show this uh, position of the wire just to convert to the 3D images. Just a moment, if I have a no, no, uh, absolutely, minute, Yoshi. This the, uh, is really educational. I think there was a no. Uh... Um, I think uh, the wire was not external. That's uh, obvious in the uh, uh, in the setting. Uh, just a moment. Good expansion distally. Yes, and there's a no uh, um, dissection in the distally. That's also uh, yeah. positive, and uh, you can probably see the. Alors, un petit test. Okay. Tom, can you help us in interpretation? So we just, so we just don't have any dissection. now converting, so we have dissection. the bifurcation no. on fast, yeah. and so then uh, we so can see that large cell that the wire is yes, passed yes. through. Uh, oh, yeah. In fact, you see beautifully they're both bifurcations. Yeah. So the yeah, mm. first wire is uh, actually yeah. Yeah, um, in the mid uh, strut. You could in the mid strut, yeah. yeah. Okay. You could potentially go one distal uh, cell, which is probably makes things uh, better. And for okay. the wire of circumflex, oh, actually, the wire is going to the proximal uh, uh, cell. Uh, so I think uh, probably uh, at least for the uh, circumflex, for the circumflex it, it's it will be better to cross uh, uh, the, the distal uh, yes. strut. Strut, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you can really see that. Uh, um, yeah, so this is a left main ostium, uh, a circumflex ostium, yeah. and you can see that this okay. is a proximal. Left, left is distal, so the wire is taking the proximal cell. So I think we should go one strut further. Uh, also, same for yeah, the uh, diagonal. This is the ostium of the diagonal, and it's taking the second cell. If possible, the better to go for the. Uh, okay, we can use yeah. this strut for the diagonal branch, but we have to change for the circumflex. Yes, so yeah. we can clearly see the uh, information given by the O by the OFDI yeah. are really better than the Anjo because with the Anjo we thought that we we were at the distal strut. Very interesting, thank you. And so wh while you are discussing, I do a re report on the proximal LED because I think Perfect. there was uh, uh, some malapposition. Some proximal. malapposition. And now we will try to go in a more distal strut it is very important to redo the, the part uh, because he is going to, uh, to go through the, the ostium of the circumflex with another wire. So to be sure that the, the stent is on the wall of the, of the left main, we have to perform a, a new part and then uh, recross with the wire and try to uh, catch the distal strut of this, uh, uh, of this okay, circumflex. Uh, Tom, what are the tips and tricks? This is uh, very interesting because we, we, we can clearly see. We, yes? Yeah, what are the tips and tricks? Would you maintain the wire in the circ and try to go distally and see the gap? What, what you are going to do different? Yeah, you, uh, as, as you can see, Goran, I took another wire. I went in the stent in the LED, and I will try to fall in the circ by retrieving gently. So let's do just the test. No. Yeah. Okay, test la. So you see, yeah. this is angiographically yeah. really yeah. looks yeah. Here be in the and the a very dist distal strut. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> it's but not really easy to go yeah. in the. Okay, so let's. That's really well done. Enjoy. So 
It looks like more distal now, but... Yeah, we need to confirm. You, you can really see the distance between the first wire... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, a huge distance between the jail wire and, uh, and uh, this wire, uh, Thomas. Yeah, I would like to ask Dr. Onuma, uh, Yoshi, in the Optimum, how many cases, although OFDI or OCT guidance was used, you were not able to finally reach the distal cell? No, okay. So, on va faire le, les, les, les key signs. Um, I think uh, the, in the Optimum trial, um, almost... Uh, um, um, majority of the cases reach the uh, um, distal cell, so we analyze in the core of the how many reach the uh, distal cell uh, uh, okay. um, optimal cell recrossing. On va prendre uh, and, uh, deux ballons de trois, un trois quinze et un trois huit, s'il te plaît. Yeah, if I remember, less than one third, you were not able so, to cross distally. Yeah. Thomas and Hakim, is, so is we're going to do now the, the kissing balloons. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say, is it your intention to kiss LED diagonal and then to repeat an OFDI to reassess that position of yeah. the second circ wire? Great. I mean, the, the, yeah. Yoshi's and, uh, shown beautifully. We also found but that uh, if you do that in angiographic guidance uh, in... Yeah. Le 15 sur l'IVA. That's it, uh, Peter, yeah, you want to comment? Half of the cases on angiographic arm reach the uh, distal. Yeah. So. I think that uh, if we are talking about uh, distal rewiring, so I think uh, for, for the uh, optimization of the stent before, uh, that is uh, it's crucial. And uh, so the proper pot and proper position of the balloon, maybe also the length of dilatation, uh, can uh, can be very helpful in the whole procedure. Okay. And uh, here, it's difficult to make the enhancement of the of the stent, uh, stented segment. But uh, in real practice, if the patient wouldn't be uh, after yeah, surgery, yeah. so it would could be very helpful uh, to to make uh, the enhancement here, stent boost or some other uh, other software to to see. And because there should be the step larger yes. and larger step diameter down of the twice. step. Yeah, yeah. Which balloon stoma you are selecting for the first kissing? We completely agree with that. So it's um, a 3015 balloon for the, um, for for the, the LED. LED. And yeah. a 3.0, uh, 8 millimeter length for the diagonal branch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so yes. it seems to be a little bit complex to cross. We'll try again. So maybe the wire is crossed because yeah, it's crossed yeah with three wires crisscrossing of the wires really in the frequent. distal part of the left main okay so i have i think i need to take another wire for the yeah, yeah. Uh, diagonal so we will take another way to to do not uh, perform any uh, crush of the stand because maybe the no, no, because maybe the the the, the wire get uh, back to the to the to the stand. So uh. okay, okay, Tom. Tom, is it really necessary to do first kissing with the? So at that step, it's very important to to. Well, so the, the only reason for that is trying to be pragmatic in terms of reducing the steps. So we've confirmed that we have a reasonable recross in the diagonal, and so our next step would be to kiss. And so we could then okay, use the subsequent the OFDI to confirm we've optimized that segment and reassess the cross in the circumflex. It potentially just takes out one yeah. additional run if we yeah. are really going to stick to a dedicated October. October yes. protocol. Okay. Yeah. 
We're having a, we'll also questions this about wire <coughs> and uh, if it doesn't cross, we will do a, an OFDI. We're having other questions about in this challenge in terms of recross. Are there different wires that would use or dual lumen catheters? Is there any other advice in terms of how you would escalate in terms of trying trying to facilitate the recross? Okay. So again, I will try to make a loop to engage the stent of the left main. What is very important to recross is to find the good view. Okay. Okay. Distal. Then. Oh, he went in the diagonal directly. Yes. So. Again, I will go in cranial view. Yeah, we can see from 3D OFDI that actually pot was properly done at that level and okay. broadly open cells in front of diagonal. That's why uh, wiring is so simple and possible cause of difficulty is uh, wire crisscrossing inside the guiding catheter. I don't think that... Uh, yeah, now removing the, the four wire. Oh, okay. I'm not sure that this is crisscrossing. We don't know if it is a, a strut of the of the stent. We will see that with the OFDI. Okay. So, try with the two three point zero uh, yeah. balloon on the diagonal. Yeah. So Commence par celui-là. More, more and more people are asking whether the kissing is necessary. Right. So, it's kind of the, the difficulties we're having procedurally are making people yeah. question whether yeah. we have a sufficient result. Okay. <laughs> yeah, how about the check on the OFDA now? So the if, patient if, is very if, young, so if the we. The circumflex wire position is very good. At that time, that we yes, fix we the can. circumflex action first. And we retrieve the first, uh, wire from the circumflex. The wire, remaining wire, the two wire. It yeah. is become a little bit easier. Yeah. yeah, let's see. I think that he crossed. On va peut-être faire l'OFDI et, et voir si le résultat est bon. Thomas. Yeah, it's not crossing easily. You, you see the, the wire, the balloon is uh, going un ballon, un, until the, 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 the ostium of the diagonal, but not crossing easily, which is quite a little bit weird. Yeah, I think also that good information so can, will be we, we, now we can to perform, perform an OFDI to, to, OFDI, to be sure that yes. we need to do. And at the same time, we will evaluate the position of the circ okay. wire. Right, okay, ah, okay. So it went through. Okay, so that, that much yeah. balloon. Okay. So be patient so and... Uh, <laughs> cross. I was, you see, you, yeah, you see the extra backup was not in a very good position, so my backup support was not optimal, and correcting this, it was enough okay. to, uh, to do that. Okay. So. And it is a non-compliant balloon, so sometimes it is more uh, difficult to cross with non-compliant balloon. Okay, Thomas. Nice. Okay, so Very we good. have the LED balloon is in good position. I will remove the, the diagonal okay. balloon. On va filmer. Okay. Okay, the position bon. is nice. Let's go. Doze, doze. I begin with the side branch. Okay. Yeah, nice opening okay. of both Up. balloons. We see clearly. Simultaneous, so, yeah. Okay, so inflation of the balloon. On va prendre un ballon de 4,15 pour l'IVA maintenant et un 3,8 pour la circonflex. So now we're going to do the, uh, the, the kissing with the circumflex and the uh, LAD. Hop, je vais te dire qui est quoi. And then perform final OFDA, yes. And uh, we will try to perform the final, final OFDI. Okay. Yeah. 
V1. Alors, circonflexe. Elle est dit. So, Hakim Thomas, you're accepting that angiographic appearance of wire separation is sufficient to say that you're in a different cell, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yes. it was a clear demonstration of that because I was amazed by the by the images with the gap between the both huh? wires, but it was not the reality at all. Thank you for this comment, Tom. Tom. But we, we have lots of people still demanding that we could have just left it with having stented and not kissing. Could I, I am a defender of kiss, but I, I'd like to hear your defense of why we're going to this effort to, to kiss both these bifurcations, Thomas Hakim. Yes, yeah, the, the patient is young. If you have a, uh, it's not frequent, but if you have a, a restenosis, uh, the treatment of the restenosis on uh, taking care again of both branches will be will be much more difficult if you haven't opened the strut uh, in the first place. So I think uh, we know that with uh, uh, key study now that, that we don't have to do it for every bifurcation. But again, the left man is not uh, standard bifurcation. Here we have a, a very, very big diagonal, which is uh, the only diagonal. So we, 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 we'd like to say that the struts are open and if we have to go back. Uh, and you, you saw also that the, there was a disease on the, on the mid uh, circ, huh, uh, which uh, with an in intermediate lesion. So maybe uh, we will have to, 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 yes, to treat yeah. it in the uh, next years and it, we will be very happy to have the strut open. Okay, so let's do a test. If, uh, injection. Test. Okay. Well, this kissing okay, is actually good. opening the door towards the circ. So I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we are convinced that the, for the provisional strategy, the kissing is a, a very good way to, uh, to reach a, a good result on the side branch and to have the uh, okay. carina at the right place. And now what are the sizes of the balloons okay. that so you selected? Again, Especially for the left mains. Mm -hmm. We selected a 4.0 balloon and a 3.0 uh, for the circ. There was a question about, is there a risk of intimacy? So now internal. we have to do the OFVI to be sure that the result Sorry, Hakeem. Is, yeah. is good. So I'm going ahead. So just a, a comment, which is a, a reasonable one about the risk of injury to the side branch by undertaking this kissing. So you have sl just slightly undersized, I, I suppose, the side branch in order to clear the struts, but avoid or at least yeah, reduce that yeah. risk of injury. Okay. Well, and that's why we, we use non-compliant balloon usually to be sure that we will not injure the okay. uh, So you see, the, on geographically, the, the result uh, is nice toward the circ. I will check just to see the result towards the diagonal now. Yeah, it's really optimal. Okay. So with minimal the branch seems nice. Minimal residual narrowing at the ostium of both diagonal and the circ. So again, it is special for for the for the left main. We can do a, a port side port in mm. uh, for for other you, you uh, see, bifurcations. You, you see, Akim. Yes. Uh, I, I think we have a slight longitudinal compression. We can see really uh, a shadow on the proximal part of the stent. So That's a good point, and then we will confirm that with the OFDI. Tom, uh, uh, 
tell us about the uh, deformation of stents. Maybe we have uh, uh, one kind of the deformation, a small uh, compression of the proximal part of the... Yeah. It we have crossing. difficulty yeah, to cross. I, as a result... He, yeah, yeah, we have yeah. difficulty to cross. Uh, uh, Maybe pulling out one of the side wires uh, will with the OFDR, you see. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, it's a good it's point, uh, Goran. Not yet. Okay. I think due to the images of the proximal uh, part of the stent, we have, have to do a, a, a another part. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will I'd rather yeah. do. Uh, we will do a, a, another part on the uh, on the left main, because we have an image, a density of the uh, on the proximal part of the of the stent. On va prendre un quatre cinq huit. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have to correct it. I will try to to to. I will have to 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 find uh, some to see if we can see it to show it for the yeah, audience. Yeah, now we can clearly yeah. see it also. Okay. And you yes, see we have on a, a both clear compression superior, of the superior no. and inferior aspect. We see proximal edge. Yeah, we have to to. Yeah. Two millimeters compression uh, on the left main. So we will do a part and then uh, perform the OFDI to confirm that. That it is clear. With the stent enhancement, we will see that also. Francesco, any comments as a procedural analyst? So um, I have uh, uh, to underline the fact that uh, this uh, looked as uh, a left, distal left main bifurcation not so complex in terms of distribution of the disease in, toward the, the different branches. But anyway, uh, left main is always a challenge. And uh, this is very important to me because uh, let's imagine that uh, this is happening in the hands of very experts operators planning a, who plan the procedure and, and doing it uh, on elective based. So let's imagine a, a young fellows doing it uh, on urgency. It is really, really important that uh, we take care about all the steps and we come back okay. uh, in the Only case the of yes, difficulties yes. in advances the device to be 100% sure about what's happening. What is important here is the fact that the operators did not use the OCT to, okay, do, do, do to, to recognize the problem, but they used another. Uh, imaging that was a stent enhancement. So this is to me very important okay. to be Energy. underlined. The fact that in the presence of uh, problems in advancing the devices, uh, let's reflect about what's going on. If we, found, we, we find the reason, okay. we may correct. If we do not find it uh, uh, timely, what we may do is translate the start of a, uh, for example, in this condition, uh, accordion effect into something okay, that can to, prevent the advance right, of further yes. devices. Because if we do not correct, we will close a little bit more the, uh, the door toward the left main. So very important okay, it, uh, to show done. this uh, live at PCR, I think. Exactly. And he's optimizing now proximal edge using stent enhancement. And we will confirm after that with the OFDI. You, you saw the images with the stent enhancement? Yes, yes, we see it. Yes, we see it still. It is clear that we have a, a longitudinal compression of the stent. Right. So, uh, Thomas did the new pot, okay, optimizing the, uh, the stent at the proximal part. So the the image is better, but still there is something on the um, on the bottom part of the stand. So, okay, off.
Okay. Let's so, do now the OFDI if it's possible. Yeah. And uh, we will uh, decide if we put another stent on the proximal part of the of the the left main. Yeah. We will see we, that with the OFDI. So if we are well opposed, we will do nothing more. Yeah. And if there is some uh, malaposition or, or dissection or, 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 or something stand, stand like that, deformation, we can put a, a, a small 4.5 uh, Nagomi uh, yeah. stents. Now you have broad variety of lens, not only diameters but also lens. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Un petit peu de mou. Mm. Yeah. Ok. Yes. You see, now it now lands. Now we can do the... So it means Some that this test, longitudinal okay, deformation yeah. was causing the problem. Yeah. Un petit test. <coughs> oh, yes, yeah. Ok, okay. good. Ok. Ok. On a l'injection qui marche pas. Vas-y, réessaye, réinjecte. Voilà. Ok, parfait. Ok, ouais, c'est bon. It, it has been done. So this is a distal LED, nice. So we yeah. correct the malaposition on the proximal LED. Bifurcation and okay, Dr. Anuma, we yeah. are hearing you. Maybe yes. we maybe we need another injection to see more the, the proximal yeah. 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 to flash to so flash blood better. Yeah. 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 The renal function of the patient is very good. Huh? Je retire un petit peu. Tu peux mettre 6. Ok. Ok. C'est bon yeah. Injection. Yeah, really. ah, yes, it like seems yeah. to be better with this run. I think the result on the left main is quite nice. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks like uh, there's a yeah, more good. significant uh, mara position. Um, the uh, imaging was uh, not uh, really optimal, but I think in the, in the second view, you can really clearly see that proximal uh, part of the left main stenting. It's no, no significant mara position. That was good. I will go back to the uh, other uh, um, run to see the uh, um, recrossing point of the uh, um, diagonal and the circumflex. Just to let me uh, analyze for, if you give me one minute, I will do it. No, 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 absolutely. Uh, Dr. Kinoshita, any uh, comment regarding this uh, stepwise use of imaging to correct the, uh, uh, proximal yeah. malformation, but also to check the wire position? Would you do something different? Yet, so the, so uh, actually the, so once we the, uh, check the OFDI and uh, uh, what information we when uh, when I consider what information we can get from the first uh, the uh, first OFDI, we can uh, so the maybe the uh, we can know the uh, the ah. the side branch position this and is uh, the place the the, uh, between the uh, okay. center okay. Re relationship yeah, between the stent strut and. Uh, 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 side branch osteo. So, the, to know that the, we, the naturally we can see, the, we can uh, understand the which position is better to uh, crossing the wire. To, but uh, and, uh, after the crossing the second wire, we have to check the OFD again before the ballooning. 
because the, the second way, uh, the, we uh, actually we try to uh, penetrate the second uh, the correct position with the second way, but I'm not sure if that is correct or not. Yeah, but mm. it seems that they completely remove the jail struts. So mm. But I think that was a pragmatic approach, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. I think, uh, as you can yeah. see, that uh, for the circumflex, the uh, yeah. ostium is the yeah. ostium is very widely open. You Should don't see that any metal in front of the ostium, the circumflex. So I think the, probably the it was angel guided, but uh, the wire took the distal uh, position, and also the uh, diagonal part is uh, also widely open in these uh, OFDI images. So we are happy with the result. Yeah, the, yes. the angiographic result is good. I the think OFDI Akim, also. If if you agree, we can do a, a, a non geo without the wires. Exactly. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think we we correct uh, the the compression, and we see and that the result on both bifurcation. Is and today we have learned a lot about the uh, the OFDI in the, the complex uh, treatment of a bifurcation, especially the left main. So we saw uh, uh, that the infant information given by the OFDI regarding the diameter, the real diameter of the left main, the diameter of the distal part of the bifurcation was very informative. We, we saw also the importance of this uh, tool to be sure that we get the distal strut to be sure that the result on the bifurcation will be uh, okay. And we uh, uh, also uh, control the fact that the pot was really well done with a non uh, uh, mala position of the stent on the proximal and all the uh, uh, bifurcation, uh, uh, Thomas. Yes. And uh, the, so uh, there, the uh, final uh, uh, contrast volume big, is uh, yeah, all two, 280. Yeah, uh, yeah. We finish with two, uh, two gray. And uh, I think uh, the result is nice. It was very uh, important to have the OFDI today uh, to correct the issue on longitudinal compression and to help us to have the good struts to perform the, the two key things. Thank you to all the team and thank you uh, PCR and thank you to Terry Moti. Thank you. Thank you, Akim. Final comments. <coughs> Francesco. So, <clears throat> to me, was uh, really exciting to see how I mean, uh, the, the planning of the procedure should be verified step by step during our procedure as well. So good plan, but uh, I mean, when we are technically doing things, I mean, not all the steps we are doing translate in success. And uh, in order to translate a good program with some technical pitfall in something that can be a pitfall for the patient, there is uh, all the steps that have been done. That is basically the reevaluation of uh, the efficacy of the steps and uh, the possibility that uh, in the case there is uh, problems uh, in the next step, the evaluation of the cause for that uh, that prompted for the correction. Thank you, Francesco. Mubarak, yeah. final comments? Yeah, I, I think it's a great demonstration of uh, using imaging for uh, trifurcation uh, lift main. And it shows how it's valid to, uh, to use the imaging, even in the crossing of the wire and uh, doing uh, uh, kissing uh, balloon and uh, getting the optimal result of your uh, lift main BCI. Recognizing the pitfalls, what happened during the procedure is really very mandatory. Uh, as correcting this uh, pitfalls is uh, translate to the outcome and the result of your uh, BCI. How would you follow this patient? What would be the follow-up modality? I, I think uh, such patient, at least uh, one year uh, dubbed as a left main uh, BCI, we, we don't use uh, regular uh, routine angiogram. We follow him uh, just yeah. in the OBD, see his uh, symptoms, and uh, follow him as a routine patient. Thanks. 
Dr. Kinoshita. Yep. So the, uh, today's case is a very, very educational case, and uh, to using the uh, imaging modality, we can uh, so the, we can uh, do the very, very uh, so how can correct it? Uh, we can use a correct procedure even in the left membrane complex left membrane bifurcation. Uh, but uh, so using by the uh, intravascular imaging, I think that it's important to check step by step using the uh, imaging modality. So uh, to do that, the, uh, what's happened uh, now, we can know. And, uh, uh, we, and then we can't, uh, so we can't uh, consider the, uh, how to resolve the, this problem. And that is a very, very important. And that is a very, very good point to using the intravascular imaging. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I support what also Tom wrote in the consensus that education needs to go parallel to problems with reimbursement and cost of imaging. So major barrier is actually to educate now people how to properly stepwise optimize result. And if you see this deformation, correct periprocedural. We now have data from the October that we will directly improve clinical outcome of our patients. Peter, final comments? I think that uh, we have seen uh, a lot of technologies that uh, were used, but um, in a sufficient and uh, perfect way. Uh, so to help uh, the patient outcome, not only the primary success, but uh, the long term follow up. And uh, from my point of view, it, of course, it's uh, mandatory to, to use uh, um, intracoronary imaging for such uh, complex lesions. and. Uh, what uh, we have uh, to appreciate that uh, we have seen uh, within uh, nearly one hour uh, a lot of uh, things, what a lot of steps that uh, have done have been done in a proper way. So I liked uh, very much the educational value and of course the final result of the of the procedure. So congratulations to the to the team. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Congratulations to your team. Any final comments on your side? Yes, thank you. No, I agree. Uh, I think the team should be congratulated. Thomas, Akim, and all the team did a great work. Um, what they did is treating four vessels with one stent, and this requires step by step uh, imaging, OFDI imaging, guided procedure, and every step need to be very carefully done. I mean, the pot uh, size, the pot of the balloon, the location of the balloon, and all the steps you, you see, they did very carefully, but at the end there were some compression, minimal compression that they recognized very early, which is very important because that could be fixed with one pot, one added pot, which is much better than having a a second stand in the left main with some overlapping in the left main. So very carefully done with a very, very, very nice result. And um, yes, I'm very happy today for the result. Perfect. Results. Congratulations. Tom, final comments or some final questions you would like to address? We've had fantastic interaction. I worry that some of the room leave thinking, we should just why kiss, just do it <laughs> the way. And I don't think this is about right or wrong, but what, as everyone's described, we've seen the most beautiful demonstration of imaging, using angiographic assessment, but most importantly, engaging with the information that we get back. Uh, and as you've described from the October analysis, we see that half of these events go undetected in the cath lab. And when that happens, proper harm comes to the patient. So we saw a 20% MACE rate in those patients where we hadn't detected the harm that we've caused to the devices. So it is our responsibility to take every care and every step to ensure that patient leaves the cath lab with a device that is appropriate and optimized to the lesion that we've been treating. And I think this is a perfect yeah. demonstration. Thanks. I think that we discussed during the image analysis with Yoshi the value of intracoronary imaging, so we will not repeat again with the slides what we exactly in depth discussed and tried to share with the audience the importance of integrated evaluation with imaging. So I would like to ask you to put on my slides with uh, key learnings from this session. Uh, First of all, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much for fantastic comments and questions. It really helped us better communicate with uh, 
better communicate with the team in the lab, learn from them, and also help them improve procedural results. It's also thanks to your great comments and questions. I also thank the whole team here on the stage. And finally, I thank the Terumo for organizing this session. In my view, uh, the key learnings for today are that stepwise provisional side brain stenting strategy remains the gold standard approach for most left main trifurcation lesions as well. Optical frequency domain imaging techniques strongly recommended to decide the strategy, decide lesion preparation strategy as well, and optimize the result of bifurcation and in this case trifurcation left main. And finally, the Altimaster Nagomi DES, built on the heritage of the Altimaster Tansei, preserves key features for optimal use in complex anatomy with improved deliver deliverability and enhanced overexpansion capacity. I wish you successful rest of the PCR. Thank you very much.